Are you beginning to doubt that this is going to be worth it at the end? The only thing that's going to make it worth it is the end. <laughs> No, but really, I mean, you're putting out 15 grand and you're putting your body to its physical max right. for a record. Well, I'm not doing it for a record. That just seemed to come along with the package. So why are you doing it? I'm doing it to challenge myself. 34-year-old Victoria Burgess set out to be the first woman to paddleboard from Havana, Cuba to Key West, Florida. The 115-mile journey will see her traveling through shark-infested waters in a region that is generally accustomed to random pop-up storms and severe winds. It will be an official Guinness World Record attempt. I'm expecting it to take like 25 to 30 hours. Actually be standing the entire time. Hopefully it will be flat. It's gonna be on a full moon. We planned it to go with the full moon so at least I have some light because we can't light up the water because the lights attract fish and we don't want the fish. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think the most challenging part about the 30 hours or, is the dark. In order for Victoria to get the Guinness World Record, she'll have to complete the crossing in under 30 hours, a number she's not too concerned about. Really, I'm just doing this to complete it. If I take longer than 30 hours to do this and I don't get the record, I'm really not going to care. I'll still be the first female to do it no matter what. I mean, I just found the record because I was looking to see if anybody had done it before. In 2013, Ben Freiberg became the first man to stand up paddleboard from Havana to Key West. It took him 28 hours to complete the crossing. So when Victoria realized she'd become the first woman to do it, she decided to dedicate it to raising awareness on women in sports and equality. So the reason I'm doing this paddle is because I want to show young girls and women that they're free to do anything they want to as long as they set their mind free, and that's why I chose the name Chica Libre. It means free girl in Spanish. It means to set yourself free from anything that might be holding you back. I wanted this paddle to inspire other women to go out and face their fears and chase their dreams. Victoria only started paddleboarding five years ago when she met her boyfriend and now paddleboarding coach, Rory Cam. When they met, she was an accomplished surfer with 15 years of experience in the water. But paddleboarding races and eventually crossings gave her competitive side a new challenge to focus on. For the last six months, she's been solely focused on training for the Chica Libre Cuba to Key West crossing, which includes long distance paddles, running and sprints, hours of yoga, and CrossFit workouts all while working a full-time job as a firefighter. Like a lot of people really don't understand how you can have a full-time job and train for something like this, which is another reason why I feel so strongly about doing this. So I wanna show people that I can also figure out ways to accomplish my goals regardless of the situation. The workouts will prepare her body to paddle for up to 30 hours nonstop. Although Victoria will have to sit down for a minute to eat every hour, without eating, there's no way she'll have the fuel to complete the crossing. So the nutrition aspect is a huge factor in this, and we've been doing a lot of planning for it. This is my meal bag. I have lots of peanut butter, pasta, Alfredo sauce, bread, Oreos, chocolate chip cookies, fruit strips, Pop-Tarts, baby food, energy gel stuff because, you know, this is all electrolytes. So I'm anticipating that I'm going to be eating 11,000 calories and about 25 liters of fluids over a 30-hour crossing. Your muscles are burning through so much glycogen that you need to replenish it. So that's why you eat more carbs and simple sugars, which are quick acting. I mean, basically, if I don't eat, I'm not going to make it. I'm gonna be 30 hours in the middle of the ocean. I get to see the best sunsets, the best sunrises, eat, drink, and hang out with my friends. And paddle a little bit. So. Just a little. <laughs> just a little. I just keep paddling. Victoria and her team sailed to Cuba on a support boat two days before embarking on the crossing. I have a support boat. It's a 50-foot catamaran out of Key West. And I have a whole crew. I have a paramedic friend of mine, who's also a paddler, um, my boyfriend who got me into stand-up paddling, and 
another friend, Bob. He is my protector. He's not scared of sharks because he jumped on a bull shark in the Keys. And so I figured I needed somebody who is going to protect me if some wild creature comes up. Not saying that Rory and Jake wouldn't, but Bob would be probably the first in. I, I don't think we'll have a problem. We'll be paddling with her throughout the night. There will always be someone there at her side. Her mom told me I better protect her, so I will. The boat is going to be either behind me or next to me. During the nighttime, they'll keep me close. And they're going to keep me on track, like, within a mile range, depending on the currents and all that. The crew enjoy the 22-hour sail to Havana and, of course, get some fishing in. Once they arrive in Cuba, they'll only have a day to spend there before starting the crossing back to the U.S. She is pretty crazy. Who would want to paddle from Cuba to Key West anyways? I mean, that's pretty nuts. So if you think of something crazy that no female's ever done before, give Vic a call. <laughs> Things that can go wrong is you're standing on your feet for so many hours and like your feet, they will start cramping up. She's gonna have to be moving her feet, her toes, to keep the blood circulating a lot. Uh, her lower back, I mean, it, it could start hurting after two hours, it could start hurting after 10 hours. Uh, your arms are going to be hurting, your forearms will be hurting, your shoulders. A lot of things could go wrong. This is one of the things that you don't know what, what's going to happen. Is there potential risks in this trip? Pop up thunderstorms, you know, when the weather's still like this and it's hot. The night they sailed to Cuba, things suddenly got real when a three hour pop up storm hit them. It was lightning and thundering, it got really rough. We were just thinking if, if this is something that we're going to encounter on the way back, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> so you've done a lot of these crossings like what she's doing? Yeah, I'm 15. What do you think is going to be the most challenging part for her? Mental. Okay, I'm not afraid of too many things. I'm anxious about the weather. Like, I'm not really scared of sharks. But a couple of things that came up with fear, and actually one main one for this, this is the first time I've ever put myself out there for the fear, fear of failure. If you race and nobody knows about it or whatever, but this is like, you know, you put yourself out there and everybody's watching. The team enjoy their only night out in Havana, but have to go to bed early because the next day, they have to meet the Yacht Club's Commodore before starting the record-breaking crossing. What I do is I want to inspire many women around the world to just go out and just push themselves as hard as they can and to reach their dreams and just bring hope to everybody. If you go for it and you put your heart into it, things will happen. Victoria. No sé exactamente cuáles son tus motivaciones para el viaje. I don't know exactly which are your motivations for this trip. All right. It's official. Got it. Seven twelve. Pero me imagino que el uno de los principales, una de las principales motivaciones. But I believe that one of the main motives. Probar tu fuerza. To test your strength. Probar tu voluntad. And your will. To this motivation that you have, I would like to add another one. Tú tienes que ser la embajadora. You have to be the ambassador. Del amor y la amistad. Of love and friendship. Entre nuestros dos países. Uh, between our two countries. Right when we got out of the marina area and got into the ocean, we noticed that it was a lot windier than was forecasted to my right, and we knew right then and there it was going to be a long paddle. I had to keep paddling on my left side, so I took 20 strokes to one on my left side. After hour six, my right knee started hurting, and my right knee is actually my good knee, and it wasn't what I was expecting. We're about eight hours in, and I had probably consumed about 300, 400 calories an hour, so it was time to use the bathroom. <laughs> and I knew it was gonna be a problem because I don't really like to go in the water, and I had to, and apparently it was really funny because I guess my butt was sticking out of the, <laughs> of the water. The nighttime, a storm came through, and it lasted for two hours. When we first started, we had a full moon, so I was able to see the water was nice and clear, but then when the storm came, clouds covered the moon all the way, and 
I couldn't see anything. And instead of coming from my right side now, it was coming from my back, but I still had the waves coming from my right. Now the wind chop from my back and the current from my left, so it turned into a washing machine situation. Just after the storm had stopped is when I wanted to quit. I just wanted to stop. I was questioning what I was doing and why I was even doing it. I just talked to myself and I said, am I in any pain? No. Am I dying? No. So there's really no reason to stop. And then that kept me going. When I was preparing to do this, a lot of people talked about the hallucinations that come along with endurance events. And then I did actually, right when the sun rose, I started seeing shadows that looked like a skyline, almost like Miami, but the Keys don't have any skyline, so uh, that's when I started hallucinating a little bit. At hour 24 was the first time I actually felt uncomfortable in my feet, and they were really starting to get swollen. I couldn't see the bones anymore in my feet. And the worst part was, the sun rose on the opposite side of the boat. We all got to paddle in together, me and my crew, and we started approaching the land, and you could see a bunch of people surrounding and I knew my parents were there and it was really exciting. She just plowed right through it. The last couple hours were a little bit tough on her. Three miles left to go was the first time I saw her sweat the entire time. I knew she could do it anyways, but I thought at a point that she would falter mentally and she really didn't. The biggest obstacles were the wind was a side wind the whole way, so she just battled it out the whole way, and it was amazing what she did. Thankfully, people sprayed champagne in my eyes so I couldn't cry. <laughs> well, it showed me that a lot of times we give up on ourselves to like take the easy way out when really we have the strength to push through. Victoria Burgess completed the crossing with an official time of 27 hours and 48 minutes. The crossing made it into the Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah, the struggle was worth it for sure. <laughs>